This is astronaut Bob Grodin before his first moonwalk. More than one of the men who were part of that first Apollo program found it difficult to readjust to life back on Earth, but no one more so than this man. Here he is, as he is today. Five years on. There were psychological factors, it seemed, which on the surface could explain away the changes in personality, the instability, the breakdown of former relationships. But what exactly were those psychological factors? Bravo Tango, Jezebel. A form of code, but meaning what? Certainly nothing to the 600 million people listening on Earth below. From Boston, Massachusetts, we arranged for ex-astronaut Bob Grodin to talk to us. The interview was filmed to be edited later. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me in Boston? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Grodin showed no reluctance to discuss the breakdown he'd well, suffered yes, after his return from space. But nothing remarkable seemed likely to come from the interview until I asked this question. It's been suggested, among others, by some very responsible people, that you, all of you on the Apollo program, saw far more out there than you've been allowed to admit publicly. Would you like to comment on that suggestion? What, what the hell are you trying to do to me? Can I ask you, what the hell are you trying to do to me? Well, I was only trying you're to... You're trying to screw me? Is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to screw me? Like that, like that dumb bastard Ballantyne? Is that what you're trying to do? Well, why me? I'm up there to do a job, man. That's all I was up there to do. I don't have to answer. Oh, questions. hell. What's the matter with Sorry, this thing sir. now? It's not this end. Somebody's pulled a switch somewhere. <laughs> that somewhere, so far as we could discover, was neither in London nor in Boston, but in the satellite connecting the two. The incident has never been explained. Nevertheless, that one word, Valentine, was enough to send Colin Benson and the camera operator, with some very innocent-looking home movie equipment, across the Atlantic, posing as tourists. This is what they brought back on 8mm film. I would never have found Bob Grodin unless he had been willing that I should. But starting with the few leads I had, I was brought eventually to the remote bungalow where he now lives. You want a beer? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll wait here. Annie! Annie, can we have a couple of cold beers? Hmm. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to do it out here or in there? Doesn't make any difference. I don't think we're going to have a private conversation. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Michael, baby, meet the professor. Hi. Thank you. You want to reveal all? Well, that's Annie. She's not my daughter, right? You put that on the record. <laughs> right? You got it, Bob. She's a great kid. Well, without her, I, uh... I'm pretty lucky. We talked for an hour before Grodin became willing to discuss our previous and abortive satellite interview. Uh, let me try that. Shame, <laughs> 
What exactly can you tell us about Valentine? Oh, uh, well, what I remember of Valentine is he showed up at uh, at NASA mm -hmm. with some uh, with some tape he made, and he got pretty damn excited when they put it back in that jukebox. Jukebox. Well, the decoder. I mean, you can pick up a signal if you got the equipment, but you can't uh, you can't unscramble that. Without NASA's equipment. That's right. And uh, some young guy. Help him do it. You should have known better than that. Was it this man? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it looks like him. Well, are you sure you don't want bourbon? No, 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 no. It's fine. What you're saying is that uh, Valentine was killed because of what he discovered on that tape. <sighs> well, I'm saying nothing. Um, I just saw the way that they. Uh, those guys looked at him, and uh, I knew those looks because they looked at me the same way. Those guys. Come on, come on, get a real drink, will you? Come on. Okay, Bob. What did happen out there? The moon landing. Well, we had kind of a big disappointment, and we didn't get there first. What do you mean? Those layer Apollos, they're just a smoke string to cover up what's really going on out there. And the bastards, they didn't even tell us. <laughs> Nothing. Well, what is going on? Well, how the hell should I know? You asked the Pentagon, you, you phoned the Kremlin? After all, they were first out of space. I mean, you don't think they just gave up, do you? Give up? I'm going to drink. You want to drink? No, I'm going to drink. Bob, you you got to tell me. What is going on? I mean, what did you see? Well, we came down the wrong place. And it was crawling. Man, but we were all like a milk run. You see, you're talking about men from Earth? Do you think that they need all that crap down in Florida to get two guys up there on, on a bicycle? The hell they do. You know, you know why we're there? To give them a good PR story for all the hardware that you know in this space. And we're nothing. I would. Christ, we're nothing. You know why we're there? To keep you bumps happy. To stop you from asking questions about what, what the hell is really going on out there. <laughs> Look, that's it. That, that's it. End the story. That's the finish. That's the one. That's the one. Ready?